Today we're going to look at the game 13 Dead End Drive. It was released in 1993 by Milton Bradley. It's for ages 9 and up and for 2 to 4 players. We're going to walk through the components and the gameplay, and then I'll tell you what I think about it. So the story for the game is that Aunt Agatha, whose picture hangs above the fireplace, has passed away. And Aunt Agatha had a vast fortune. And uh, 12 characters in the game, uh, which range anywhere from the maid to the cook to the boyfriend to the cat, all want to inherit that vast fortune. And so in order to do that, they've got to escape the house and have their portrait uh, above the fireplace to win and to inherit the money. Um, in the process, though, uh, they've got to eliminate the competition. So they want to get the other characters uh, to trap spaces and hopefully be able to knock them off, knock them off, or you know get them out of the game. So there are twelve characters. And at the beginning of the game, you can play two to four players. If there's four players, you each get three cards. If there's three players, you each get four cards. And if there's two players, you get six cards. Here's my kid's favorite, the cat. And these are to be kept a secret. You don't want other people to know who, uh, which characters that you have. So that makes the game a little more interesting because you can move other people's pawns and you've got to bluff a little to be able to hopefully get your piece out the, out the door uh, to inherit the fortune. So to start the game, you know, the rules suggest that you start with the youngest player and then work uh, clockwise from there. But you can do that however you want. Um, then you want to deal the cards to the player so that they know who their secret characters are and who they're trying to get out the door. Um, next, you've got these portrait cards, and there's 13 of them, including Aunt Agatha. And what you want to do is you want to shuffle these, but you want to shuffle them to where you, you can't see them. You don't want to know who's where. And then you want to place Aunt Agatha in front, and you want to put it above the fireplace. Okay? Um, and then, of course, you want to remove Aunt Agatha's card and just place it over here on the couch. And so now you can see that the chauffeur is whose portrait hangs above the fireplace. So at this point, you know, if the chauffeur can get out the front door, it's a game over, right here outside the front door, and her portrait is the one hanging above the fireplace, then that player would be the winner. So we also have trap cards, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, which need to be just placed uh, right out here to the left of the door. And you also have a detective. And there are detective cards mixed in with the trap cards. Um, and when you pull a detective card, the detective moves a spot forward on the board. And if the detective reaches the game over, the doorstep, um, then whoever's portrait is hanging above the door is the person who wins. Okay, so let's talk about what you can do when it's your turn and uh, about character movement. When it's your turn, you would roll the die, and you can see here we got a 6 and a 2. So, you can move any two pawns on the board, um, either 6 or 2. You know, So I can choose a pawn, whether it's my pawn or not, I can move one of those pawns 6 spaces and one of them 2. So, you know, in this case, I'll say I want to move the maid 2 spaces, and I want to move the hairstylist 6. Okay? And remember, you can move any character that you want. Um, one thing to keep in mind is you need to move one at a time. So if I move the maid two, if the maid lands on a secret passage or on a trap, then I need to resolve that first before I move on to moving the next pawn. You also can't move through things like walls. The black lines are walls. You can't move through or around or onto furniture you know, you'd have to go around it, not on top of the furniture or through a wall. Um, another thing you'll notice on here are these little trap doors. They're secret passages. And the secret passages, there's a secret passage by every trap. So there's one here, there's one back there by the chandelier, by the fireplace, by the staircase, and by the statue. 
And so let's say, you know, my maid's over here and I rolled the six and the two. Well, I can choose to move the maid six spaces and I can use the passageway as one of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I, I moved through a secret passage and I moved um, around the couch back there. Instead of onto it, you can't move onto it. Um, another thing, another part of the game is if you roll doubles, you've got some options. Um, first off, you have the you can if you choose to. You don't have to. You can change the portrait. So if I don't have the chauffeur, I can change it. And you just move it to the back and next to the gardener. So if the gardener made it out the front door at this point, uh, the gardener would win the game. So another benefit of doubles is that you can actually move a character one pawn, the total of the two dice. So in this case, you know, if you rolled two twos, I could move one character four spaces. You know, so if it's two ones, I can move one character two spaces. If it's two sixes, I can move one character twelve spaces. Or if you choose, you can still move two characters two spaces in this scenario. So let's talk a little bit more about movement. You can't move a piece from the spot it starts in back into the same spot. So, you know, in this case, you know, you look at the cat. The cat's on a trap space, and whoever put the cat there before was unsuccessful in tripping the trap, so the cat's still alive and still on that spot. Well, you can't just at that point say, I'm going to spring the trap on the cat. Uh, you got to move the cat, and you can't move the cat back. So let's say you rolled a, one of your die rolls was a four. You can't go one, two, three, four. You can't move it from the spot it was on back to that spot. You could try to move the cat another way, you know, one, two, three, four, toward another trap. You can move the cat, you know, in a way to where you're still close so that maybe on your next turn, if, if no one else moves the cat, you could get them back onto the trap. Um, or you can just move another player if it's not going to work for you and keep the cat uh, where it was. Let's talk about the trap cards. If you move... You know, let's say I rolled a three here on the cat, and I move the cat onto uh, the trap space. Um, I have to have the bookcase trap card in order to spring the trap onto the cat to knock him off to, and to get that the character out of the game. And so what I would have to do is if I have, if I've already drawn trap cards from previous times that I've moved pawns onto trap spaces, and I have the bookcase... I could just, once the cat lands there, I could go ahead and just announce that I have the, the bookcase card and spring the trap on the cat. Um, if I don't have the bookcase card, when I move the cat onto the trap space, I can draw a card. And if you draw the bookcase card, then you can spring the trap on the cat. So let's look at the different cards. There's fireplace, chandelier, bookcase, statue, a personal favorite, the stairs. And then there's combo cards. So this one could trip the fireplace or the statue, bookcase or the stairs, and so forth. There's several of the combo cards. Then there's also a wild card. So this will spring any of the five traps onto a character. And then you could also draw a detective card, which are sprinkled throughout the deck also. If you pull the detective card, it does move he moves, the detective moves one step closer um, to the front door. And so remember again, if the detective gets to the front door, uh, the game does end, and whosoever's portrait is above the fireplace um, inherits the fortune and wins the game. And after a card's been used, you just discard it over to the side out of the game. I'm going to show you what it's like to spring the traps. So, the bookcase, you would... Um, you know, put the cat up on the bookcase or the pawn, whoever it is, and you you, you um, knock him knock him off. And so at that point, the cat is out of the game. You would remove the cat's piece from the game. You would put the trap back the way it was because it can be reused. And you know, if the cat's portrait is the one that's up on the fireplace, you can go ahead and remove it. Otherwise, once the cat's portrait does come up in the process. Um, then you would just remove it from the game.
chandelier trap. Trap. Put them on the red square there. Flip her back into the fireplace. Stair trap, which is the one my three-year-old always tries to move every piece to, even if it's his. Goes up here on the blue square. And then boom! Knocker is the statue trap. So there are three ways that you can win at 13 Dead End Drive. The first is to be the last character standing. So in other words, all the other pawns have been knocked off and you're the last character. The second way that you can win is if the detective makes it all the way up the sidewalk, gets to the front door where it says game over. If your character's portrait is hanging above the fireplace, then you win. And the third way to win is to get your character out the front door to where it says game over and for their portrait to be hanging above the fireplace. So overall, I would say that I, I really like this game. Um, my kids really enjoy playing it. It's fun to play as a family. Um, it's not real intense. There's a little bit of strategy involved with bluffing. Um, I, I, I just like uh, the traps. The kids especially really like setting off the traps and knocking over the pieces. Um, you know, the, the only thing to it is the game board is a little elaborate. It takes some time to set up. So, you know, if you're going to set it up, you want to probably play a few games on it before you put it away. Um, but you know what? I say it's worth buying, uh, in my opinion. Um, you know, I picked it up, gave it a try, and um, we're going to keep it around our family and, and play it a lot. I think we've already played it uh, three or four times since we I got it just a couple of days ago. Thanks for watching.